With OpenAI Silver getting all the hype in the last couple of months, I can imagine some people are wondering what existing software will do is and how it performs. We've all seen the quality that OpenAI aims to achieve, but as of writing this, it seems to be getting pruned of anything that might be deemed offensive. Don't want another ChatGPT situation as bad hands do we? But I'd be lying if I didn't admit to making it say some really dumb things when it was first released. I wonder if OpenAI would have deleted the conversations had I not deleted them myself forever ago. But while we're waiting for that, why don't we take a look at what else we can use instead? So Pika Labs is an online tool that was released in late September 2023. We can sign up using Discord and Google. Signing up is completely free and the first place you'll be taken to is the Explore page where you can see other videos people have made. If you want to watch them at their current resolution you can just hover over them. Or to increase them we can click the enlarge icon at the bottom right hand corner. Pika Labs have recently added the ability to enable sound effects. So try not to set your volume too high before you play them. If you look along the top, you'll see different features that will be used. Like for this sizzling bacon one, we've got video input and sound effects. And for those fireworks, we have added 4 seconds. Running along the bottom here, we've got redo, retrim, edit, add 4 seconds. And you can click the three dots to the right of that and upscale. Beneath that, unless video input was used, it will have the prompts for the generation alongside a share button. But before I describe what these buttons do, I'll point you towards where we can actually generate our own videos. We'll be able to describe what we want in our video here. Below that, we've got the options that touch reference media, enable or disable sound effects. Adjust the aspect ratio or reduce frame rate. Maximum is 24 FPS. Some useful effects you might like to use when generating a video can be found here. We can do things like making the camera move around or zoom in with a motion setting here. The majority of generative AI models have the ability to include a negative prompt, and you can find that to the right of motion control. Similarly, we've got text consistency, which controls how the video will follow the prompt. So going back to these buttons directly underneath each video, we try and reprompt of just two sides of the same coin. Just one lets you alter the prompt first using the existing video as an input so it doesn't stray too far. Edit will not only let you alter the prompt, but also also a portion of the video. Think of it like in-painting. And expand canvas is like out-painting as it will give you a zoomed out look. Lip sync is also fairly new. If you've got a character you want to animate saying subscribe to Koala in a lab, you can either type it in here and click generative voice or you can record yourself seeing it and attach it here. But do be mindful before recording a speech. The basic plan only allows you to make videos up to 3 seconds long. And that's if the character in the video is already talking before adding lip sync. He'll look like he's muttering under his breath. Like this. Unfortunately, the basic plan doesn't let you upscale footage either. If you are considering paying for it, then I'll put a comparison here of all the different features. If you're committing to a year, then it's going to be cheaper in the long run, but that depends on what you really plan to use it for. If you are interested in some use cases outside of what you can already see on the website, here's a page on Reddit showing the recreation of an advertisement. Of course, it's not 100%, and I'm not sure why anyone would want to upshot salt on the face, but it's still worth a look. You can also find many examples on YouTube too. If we go back to the ones I've made, you can see I've already fiddled about with some rads and pumps and modifying things I've seen in the explore tab, but I was curious to pay a little less than £10 after conversion and see what I can generate with a month of the standard plan. For my first project, I wanted to go all out with the different options. I wanted to see if I could generate a short clip of John Wick as an anime running through a building. I gave it a bit of motion and had the camera pan to the right. For the negative prompt, I put photorealistic and stood still. I didn't realise it before, but if you click retry, it will appear under the preview next to your original video. As for the new one, yeah it wasn't perfect either. Anime John Wick would try and move, and then he would morph to an entirely different angle. So then I tried to repompt, but if I specify the direction he's running, put morphing in a negative prompt. Again, he's not running, there's no camel work. He's got his gun out, which I didn't ask for, but hey I still like it nonetheless, and at least he's giving it some posture. The problem with working with AI like this is that you're kind of settling for compromise. I didn't initially ask for this specific scene, but I was interested in seeing what would happen if I added sound, lengthened the clip and upscaled it. At this point though, I don't know if I was doing it wrong, but I wasn't really impressed. 
Extending the footage just made them stop morphing again and continuing the weird little dance he was doing. So my next experiment was to try an ogre lurking through a swamp. And while it was somewhat accurate to what I typed, in my head I was envisioning Shrek stomping through a swamp like it was a 2D platformer. So instead of clicking the prompt, because I know it would try and make it similar to what is already there, I just changed it to clarify what I just said. Pixel art style, Shrek stomping through a swamp, 2D platformer, video game. And while this D1 definitely resembled Shrek, it made an attempt to get the art style correct, but Shrek wasn't moving. The background did resemble something I'd expect to see in the video game however, so for the next experiment, I thought, if the AI seemed to get a somewhat reasonable idea of who certain characters are like John Wick and Shrek, what would happen if I made up some ridiculous crossover like The Simpsons meet Star Trek? Or to be more specific, Ned Flanders shaking hands with Mr. Spock. And I don't know what I was expecting. AI has never been able to differentiate between two people in a single image. So moving on from those, I haven't actually tried using a reference yet. So I generated an image from Microsoft Designer slash Dali 3 of something like Man in Business Attire giving speech on stage. I was quite impressed with this one as it made the image come to life. The only problem is that it won't let me apply motion controls so I couldn't zoom out, but it would let me change the aspect ratio so I tried that. And then I added 4 seconds and upscaled the footage. I'm still not sure why though, because I went back a day later and the options weren't grayed out. There is the option to upload a video as well, but one thing I don't think Pika has yet is a slider to indicate how much you want the AI to reference whatever you've attached. Like for example, if I was using Midjourney and attached the image of a man giving a speech, I could reduce the image weight so that all Midjourney understands is that there's a humanoid figure standing in the centre of the screen. Stable Diffusion has that option as well. Before I wrap up the video, it did occur to me that maybe I should do some experiments to show hands. So I'll show you the ideas I came up with. I know previously I'd prompted Ned Flanders shaking hands with Mr. Spark, so I thought I'd just change the art style of that. This is what it gave me, and I'm not entirely sure why it instead decided to give me a close-up of Ned Flanders. So I increased the text consistency, and it gave me this, which I guess is a little closer to what I had intended, but not really. I thought if I increased the duration, then maybe I'd see more of the hands. So I added showing hands to the prompt. Then this happened, which at least should be some hands. Another test I did to demonstrate this was a miniature person waving at the camera from the centre of a coffee cup. I thought adding stuff like videography and photorealistic would give me something more like what I want, but instead it gave me this, and I think that's where I'll leave it for now. So a bit of a shorter video, but hopefully I've given you a good enough look into Pika Labs and whether you want to play around with it and see what you can come up with. These were just some quick experiments, but with some more tweaking of prompts and settings, more references, I can imagine you could come up with some really creative or trippy looking videos. I say trippy based on what I've seen, but there's nothing to stop you editing the region to fix anything that looks wrong. The AI generated sound effects leave a lot to be desired, but you can always just edit in your sound sorts from elsewhere. But if you did like this video, do make sure to like and subscribe. It's always fun to look into these different services. I hope you all have a very pleasant week. Bye now.